Hello and welcome to the Crown Hills Kitchen. Today we're going to be making lasagna. So the first thing that I need to do, as before any lesson, I always need to make sure I clean my work surface with the antibacterial spray. That's to reduce and remove any bacteria and germs that may be lingering on that work surface. It's important that we do that thoroughly. My next part, I now need to prepare our vegetables. Now with lasagna, the basis of a lasagna is both a roux and a ragu sauce. So we're going to be looking at using both sauces in today's recipe. The first thing that I need to do is that I need to prepare my onion. Now, my chopping board's a little bit slippy, so what I've done is I've got a brand new cloth here. I've just wet it. I'm just going to put that on the work surface and then my chopping board on top to prevent it from moving. Just prevents any accidents and any sliding around. So with my onion, this is quite a large onion, so I'm only going to use half of it. Just a reminder with regards to onion, there's two parts to the onion. The first part is this root part, the hairy part, and then you've got this bulb part at the top. Now I'm going to say this twice. Do not cut the root off. Do not cut the root off. Okay, I hope you can remember that. The reason why if you do, you'll end up crying. There's a gas inside there called ammonia, and if that escapes, it can react with your tear ducts and it can make you cry. So we always cut off the other end first. So using the claw method, we're going to cut that part up. I'm going to pop that straight into my waste bowl. I'm now going to turn it upside down and that keeps it nice and flat so it doesn't wobble. And I'm using the bridge method and I'm going to cut directly through the middle of the root. So I end up like this. And you might not be able to see on here, but there's a dark yellowy part near the root. And what that does, if you allow the root to be cut off, that's where that gas is that I spoke to you about, that ammonia. And that can go into the atmosphere, it can go around in the air. It might not react with you and your tear ducts, but it could react with somebody else on the opposite side of the room. So that's why it's really important that we do that. I only need half, but what I'm going to do first, I'm just going to get a waste bowl from here, which is my waste management bowl, and I'm just going to peel the onion to start with. Okay, I'm just doing this now and getting rid of the skin because I don't need that part. And underneath this skin, there are some cutting lines. Now the onion is a fantastic vegetable because it allows us to actually follow these cutting lines and it tells us exactly where we need to cut. Now I'm going to leave a centimetre gap from the root to prevent that ammonia from escaping, okay? So using my bridge method, I'm firstly going to cut in the centre of the onion along the cutting line, leaving that centimetre gap from the end, and then continue using those cutting lines as guidance and the claw method switching back to the bridge to follow those lines which are closest to myself. I'm going to keep doing that. I'm then going to turn it in the opposite direction. Again, using the claw method, I'm now going to cut these into tiny cubes. And this is called dicing when you create small cubes of onion. And I'm going to go all the way and leave that centimetre gap. So I now have nice, small, fresh pieces of onion. Now, because I don't need to put that in the saucepan straight away, all I'm going to do is to put this onion straight onto a metal plate. And this will just keep my work area nice and clean, so I haven't got to worry about making a mess or it transferring or cross-contaminating any other things that I may use. So that's my onion. The next thing that I need to do, I now need to do the garlic. Now, with the garlic, there's two parts to the garlic. You've got this tail part here, and you've also got this flat end. We cut the flat part, okay? So with my knife, I'm just gonna cut the flat part off, okay? It then allows us very easily to peel the garlic just like a banana, and it should peel off quite easily. If it doesn't, you might need to just use your fingers and your nails just to peel it, but most of the time, it should come off quite simple and quite easily, like this. What we then need to do is we need to crush the garlic, and we do that using a garlic crusher. I'm going to open this up like this, put the garlic in there, close it over. I'm going to place this directly onto my metal plate, not straight on top of my onion, I'm just going to do it to one side, but I'm going to squeeze it using my knife. I'm just going to scrape the bottom part off that's been crushed. Now there's some bits on the inside, there's nothing wrong with that, it's just not gone through the crusher. So using my knife, I'm just going to take this part out, and put that onto my metal plate because I can still use that within my lasagna. The next thing that I'll need to do is to make my ragu sauce, I'll need some chopped tomatoes. Now to do this, I'll need to use a tin opener and there's two parts to the tin opener. This part here, 
This is the cutting blade, okay? This has to hook over the side of the tin to actually cut the top off. And what we do is we hook it over the side, click the two handles together, and you should hear a click. Hopefully you can hear that. And we hold them with our left hand and we turn it and go all the way around. And you'll see on the camera that the tin is turning. And that goes all the way around. Now if your tin is slightly damaged or dented, you might find it that it's a little bit hard in some places. I always use a knife just to flick this part open, but you must be so careful, okay? This is incredibly sharp. If you slice your fingers on this, it will hurt, so be very careful. You can use a spoon, you can use a butter knife, that would probably be best, but have that ready open. The next part that we're going to do now is we're actually going to make the ragu sauce, okay? Now, to make this ragu sauce, I require a small saucepan. Now, in my saucepan, for lasagna, I'm going to need to use mince. Now, traditionally in a lasagna, we use minced beef, and that's what I have here. But you could use minced lamb, you could use chicken, you could use a vegetarian option, something like corn. It's really, really your choice, but I'm going to go with, with beef today. And what I need to do is, firstly, is I need to open this, which I'm just going to do very quickly. And I'm going to place this straight into my saucepan, like so, okay? I don't want anything else in there at the moment, I just want that in there. I'm also going to add a tablespoon of oil into there, just like so. And now I'm going to make my way over to the hob. Now this is quite a lot of mince in here. I'm hoping that this saucepan will be big enough, I might need to transfer shortly if not. So I'm going to turn this on, I'm going to put it on, on a relatively high heat to start with. And all I'm going to do with my wooden spoon is just to break up the minced meat. And while that's doing that, I am going to get a slightly larger saucepan because I do feel that this one is a little bit too small. So when you do this, make sure you use a large saucepan rather than a small one because mine is a little bit too small. So I'm just going to keep that to one side and we'll start again. So large saucepan, all my minced meat in there. And with the wooden spoon, I just want you to mix it and to break it up. Now, whenever we're on the hob, I don't want you to walk around or to leave it unattended. There is a flame, it's like fire. You need to treat it as if it's fire and you need to make sure you're in a controlled environment. So please, please don't wander off. If you need to go somewhere and collect some ingredients or collect a piece of equipment, turn it off, go and get what you need to do and then come back. That's really, really important. So, mince meat. I'm using beef, so it's starting off being red. When it's cooked, it actually turns brown, okay? Now, if you were using lamb, that's the same. It would go from red to brown. If you were using chicken, it would turn from pink to white. Now, because this has been minced, it doesn't take as long to cook. It will only take about four minutes or so, and it will go completely brown to make sure. We do not have to use the temperature probe, as we have done before in other recipes because with minced beef or with lamb it's a little bit different you could use it if you wanted to but we tend to use that more for chicken than we do for, for beef and lamb so as you can see i'm constantly stirring this okay there's a reason why i'm doing that if i left it just to cook on its own and not be here it can potentially burn and it can also stick because it's a very fatty meat this one and when there's lots of fat there's lots of liquid which is also absorbed back into the mincemeat so when we're cooking we need to make sure that we're stirring this so as i said this will take approximately four minutes and we're just going to make sure we get this so nice and now brown. the meat is fully brown what i'm going to do now is i'm going to add my onions my garlic i'm also going to add my chopped tomatoes my salt and my herbs so we can add that straight into here and just give that a bit of a stir I'm going to add my chopped tomatoes quite slowly into here because otherwise it might spit back at me. I don't want that to happen. Again, I'm going to mix this round and you'll hear that the noise does reduce, okay? And that's because we've added something a little bit colder 
and it needs to heat back up again. Okay, so adding all of that together. Now just on top of that, I'm going to add a big pinch of salt into there. I'm going to add some mixed herbs, again a nice pinchful. And the final thing I'm going to add is some tomato puree and that just gives it a bit of a kick into there. I'm just going to put a little squirt of that in there as well. Now as the meat is already cooked, what we're waiting for now is really to heat up the actual sauce itself. And we just want to get it so that most of the moisture has um, not evaporated, but it's not as runny. So it's nice, thick sauce in there that we're going to be using. And that is your basis for a lasagna. And I'm just going to leave that on the boil just for about a few minutes or so, so that that's cooking well. Now, I'm now going to talk to you a little bit just about the lasagna sheets. Okay. Now, in lasagna, there's two different types of lasagna sheets you can get. Now, if you go to the supermarket, you will find these lasagna sheets. Now, these are dried lasagna sheets, okay? And they come in a box. You tend to get about 20 in a box, okay? And they look like this. They're relatively hard. Now, in the previous video, you will have seen Miss Para. She would have showed you how to make lasagna from scratch, or lasagna or pasta, should I say, from scratch. And here we have um, some pasta ready-made. It's not cut out yet to the shape that I require, but it's fresh pasta. Now, fresh pasta always tastes better than buying it dried, but it depends which one you want to use today. And I'm gonna make two lasagnas, one with the dried pasta and one with the fresh pasta, and I'll show you how to do the difference. Now, the other thing that we require when we're actually making lasagna is we also need a roux sauce. So this is the ragu which is cooking, this is the red tomato-based sauce, which we've got here cooking well. And we've also got a roux sauce. Now this is your white sauce that we'll be using. I've already made mine, and you'll see in the previous video how to make that, and mine's in the saucepan ready to go. But we will need to be making both sauces at the same time. So it's really important that you can manage your time. To give you a recap on how to make roux sauce, what you need is 30 grams of butter, 30 grams of flour, along with 300 millilitres of milk, and you'll whisk that in and then add some cheese and you'll end up with a nice smooth sauce like this. Now in different, in supermarkets you can buy the sauces ready made, you can buy the ragu sauce ready made, you can buy the roux sauce ready made, but if you do that in the practical subject, particularly when you get to GCSE, you won't get as much marks as you would do if you made it from scratch. So it really is your choice, it's your best opportunity to practice these skills now so that when you come to GCSE it seems really, really simple. So, I know that my now my mince is nice and cooked, I can see that it's simmering nicely, so I'm going to take this off the heat. Now, whenever I take a pan off the heat, we always put it on a wooden block. That way, it doesn't damage the work surface, and you can move it easily without obviously touching the actual pan itself. I'm also going to do the same with the roux. So, I'm going to show you how to make this now, and we'll do this using some foil tins. So I'm going to make it in foil tins. The first lasagna I'm going to make is going to be using the dried pasta. Now there's a routine that we use for this. It goes red sauce, pasta, white sauce. Red sauce, pasta, white sauce. And then we put a little bit of cheese on top. So I'm going to show you how we do this. So we take a spoonful of this mince mixture and it might need two or so, but just start off small and you're just gonna create a thin layer, very thin, don't make it too thick because you won't get all your layers in. A thin layer of ragu sauce that it covers the bottom of the tin. I don't wanna see anything of the tin, that's really important. Now, the next thing we're gonna put in is the pasta. Now, you're probably thinking to me, why have you not boiled the pasta first? Surely you need to boil it, I can't eat it like that. Well, this is the best thing about this recipe. If you, as long as you cover it and you make sure that you've got the ragu at the bottom and the roux on top, when you put it in the oven, the sauce and the liquid from the sauce will actually cook the pasta for you. So you don't have to do it in that way, you can just leave that as it is. So to do this, put both fingers together, just crack it. Don't worry if you get some little bits that fall apart, that's fine. But what we're going to do is just press that lasagna sheet into the ragu sauce and make sure it's pressed in really, really well. Okay. The next part, we're then going to put some of the roux sauce in. That's the white sauce that I was talking to you about earlier. And we're just going to pour some of the white sauce all over. And I want it to completely cover 
the pasta sheet. And that is really important because if we don't do that, it won't cook in the oven. So you end up with a layer looking like this. So that's ragu sauce, pasta sheet, white sauce. We're then gonna repeat that process. So again, I'm gonna get another spoonful, or another layer of red sauce, like this. Followed by another lasagna sheet. Again, I'm gonna crack that. Place that in, make sure I press it down and it's coated really well into here. Followed by the white sauce, okay? And I'm gonna pour the white sauce over the top again, okay? And I'm gonna make sure it completely covers that pasta sheet. That's really, really important. Now the final thing that we need to do is we're gonna put a little bit of cheese on top. Now don't go too mad with the cheese because it's quite oily, otherwise you'll end up with an oily top. We don't wanna do that. So we're just gonna sprinkle a little bit of cheese over the top. Now when we're doing it in a foil tin, it's really, really important. We must make sure that we don't go over that ledge because when we go to put the lid on, if you, it's gone over that ledge, it will pour and seep out of the sides. That's really, really important, okay? Now this will go in the oven for about 30, maybe 35 minutes. How to check when it's done, what we would do is simply get a fork or a knife and stab in the middle of it. So it would go like this. Now the pasta, if it's cooked, it will go all the way through with no, with all, no ease, it, with all ease to be honest with you, not no ease, and it will be perfect. If it's still a little bit hard and there's some resistance there, you know it needs to go on for that little bit longer. And the best thing about doing it in the foil tins, it can go straight into the oven rather than using a plastic tub to take it away. So that's that way. So I'm just going to move that to one side. The next way is using fresh pasta. So this is the pasta that was made by Miss Parrot earlier. I just want to move that out of the way. Now, this, as you can see, in comparison to the foil tin, is far too big. But it's very simple. All we need to do, we can't snap this one because it's not hard, it's fresh. All that we do is we cut it to size. So for this one, I'm just gonna do some small pieces like this. So that I have pieces that will nicely fit into my tub or into my tin. So I'm just gonna move those out of the way. So to repeat, red, pasta, white. Same principle, we're just using fresh pasta this time instead of the dry pasta. So, I have this part here, so I'm gonna put red sauce. Again, nice thin layer at the bottom, but make sure you cover the whole bottom. So just use the spoon to spread it out and make sure that it's covered the entire base. Followed by fresh pasta. So I've cut this to size. Again, I must press it in. That's really, really important. If I don't press it, it's not gonna cook. And then you've got it, the last bit is the white sauce. So I'm gonna pour some of my white sauce over the top. Again, completely coating the pasta, we see any of the pasta, not even the edge part, because otherwise it will not cook. If I haven't done that, it won't cook. So I've done that bit. And again, I repeat myself. Red. Followed by pasta. That's perfect. Again, press it down, make sure it's coated. That's really, really important. And the final bit, Hopefully I've got enough. Oh yeah, definitely. And then I'm gonna coat the white sauce just over the top, like this. And the final thing, a little bit of cheese. And just to remind you, do not go over the ledge of that tin. That's where the lid would go on, so you could carry it to and from home, that's really important. And that's the lasagna for this. So as I said, in the oven for about 30 to 35 minutes. So make sure you take the lid off before it goes in. It goes on a baking tray like this. We'll put it in the oven and that's how you make the lasagna.